What is up, everybody? My name is Austin Buckner. Trevor Holder. And you are listening to the Ice Cream Sunday podcast. This week, we are joined by the incredible Basi Afina from Senso Studios. Sir, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, dude, it's so much fun. This is one of the longer episodes we've ever had. So Yeah, this is a special XL episode. Yeah. Afia. Afia. You're good. No, it's a, so no, it's a good segue though. My uh my um name is is from the Ibibio language. Mm-hmm. So it's not a it's not a thing that I expect people to like no. You know what I'm saying? So it's a Nigerian language and there's a lot of history in it. So I pronounced, yeah. Basi I pronounced it just like the white lady on ABC. You did. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh so yeah, no, it's uh Basi Afia, um the owner and chief writer of Iowa's first black comic book and animation company, Senso Studios. Uh, bringing diversity and representation to science fiction and uh, animation and comic books. We talked about this with Cal, who we just had on a few weeks ago. So we met met a man named Cal. He is a immigrant from Manchester, England, um, and he just stopped by our booth and we met him at Des Moines Con. And like, obviously, we like like we talked about the podcast we met like Ross Marquand and we met like Ming Chen and we met all of these like celebrity guests but the coolest thing is just like to meet other people that live in this area have them on the show because we've really become like yeah. I don't know if it was our if I, it was our, our goal but we've really come become like a Des Moines Iowa Midwest podcast and yeah. so to meet other uh, just like with Cal it's just like a cool just His a story cool was crazy yeah just a cool dude and then like to meet other creators like yourself yeah. Um, that's what we want this show to be. And so you fit into that perfectly. So thank you again for, for coming on. Appreciate thank it, you man. for having me. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. All right. Well, without further ado, sit, sit back, back relax, relax, and enjoy. enjoy. Now, before we get to this week's episode, we want to share with you guys some very important news. Uh, we have our very first live event happening September 30th at Eagles Club number 1398 that's in right. Preston, Iowa. Yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, It's kind of our way of getting back to the community that kind of helped us be who we are now. Yeah, Southwest Iowa, um, obviously we're we're both from there. We went to middle school and high school in Southwest Iowa. Um, This is a a great way to bring uh, some entertainment and come and reconnect and connect uh, with people from from that area uh southwest iowa has been super supportive so um we're gonna do a live podcast recording while we're there we'll have an incredible dj a full bar uh it'll be a blast tickets are available right now uh the the link is in the description of this episode it is ice cream sunday sunday like the day of the week dot ticket uh buy your tickets come see us on september 30th can't wait to see you there I think the obvious go-to question is how did you get into all this <laughs> uh you want the long answer or the, like, oh, I want the long, long answer. form okay long so form. um god it, it, it looking back retrospect it's all been being woven together throughout my entire life uh that led me up to this point um some of the more immediate things uh, I mean, so, okay, hold on. S- staying with the long form. Um, I've been writing since I I was in first grade. Um, I, but I actually fell in love with storytelling in preschool because of The Hungry Caterpillar. Okay. <laughs> yes, I know. It's funny, but it's very true. I love that book. It's a phenomenal, like the, the character development in it was, is what really blew me away. This caterpillar goes through all of literally through all of these obstacles Mm -hmm. and things and then he goes through the metamorphosis and becomes but like i like that stuck with me i was just like i want to do that um so (laughs) so that happened so thank you eric carl um and from there just writing stories and stuff like that getting in trouble in school for 
sketch or not sketching but for uh, uh writing in, in notepads uh like writing whole stories like and i'm sitting in math class like you know um just all kinds of stuff uh I, that's why i love video games that's why i love movies i'm an actor as well so mm -hmm. like you know just all the forms of of communication and storytelling and narrative i kind of dip my toe in there speaking of acting when we met you, you invited us to a play that we never got to. And I feel so bad about that. Oh, shame on you. I know. I'm so <laughs> sorry. No, we yeah. Had every intention of going and then we just, we blew it off. No, you're like, good. Yeah. No, jerks. it's, uh, it was, um, in the upper room was the name of it with, uh, pyramid, pyramid theater company. And, um, the, it's a it's a, a black company that focuses on getting minorities on stage, basically. Nice. That's awesome. Um, so yeah they they were putting that on and they were working with Bofield Berry who is a uh, a playwright out of Nebraska um she wrote a phenomenal script and we had phenomenal actors and so we crushed it um but yeah so all those things played together and and uh, you know I grew up just uh being a theater kid and and writing stories yada yada played some sports but like once I really discovered like storytelling for real um especially like making music to still telling stories that way um so then coming to like 2019 whenever covid started um me and my poor grand and aunt wife um pregnant i always say <laughs> i always say poor and aunt because there was that like that video about people misspelling pregnant mm -hmm. on but yeah so i always like that but um so she and i we were about to have our first kid and um covid was doing its thing it was covid and coviding um and so we stayed at my mom's for i think about a year and um that's when i was like what is my purpose you know what i'm saying like everybody was doing that dude i feel um, like we all had existential yeah. crises like during those covid years yeah uh but i'm that's like my standard that's that's my default setting though is like introspective so yep. um but it, it what it did do is give me a lot of time to write more and so i started writing a book actually and that book is the the brain child that it, it's the the gift that keeps giving it's the the golden egg that you know um birthed this comic book universe um but so i was writing the book and i was finally being able to go through my list of animes and so as I'm writing this book and watching anime, I'm like, why don't I just write a friggin' manga? Like, you know? Yeah. Um, so I started doing that and I now have like over 30 years worth of content planned out and, and yeah, I, yeah. So it, <laughs> that, that's my, I had to count it a couple of times just because I was like, that's like, uh, right. Like, uh, you're like black comic book Tupac. Like you could yeah. get gun down in the streets. And yeah. You have yep. people material would, for years. People would be able to still <laughs> open up my Google Docs and, and be like, okay, this was his plan. So let's do it. Yeah. Um, to be fair, I don't have the scripts written for all of them, but I do have an entire timeline and yeah. everything written to characters That's and all that. Awesome. Um, so, yeah. So I started doing that and... Uh, time went on i ended up joining the army actually um or the national guard and so i did that thing taught me didn't i won't say it taught me anything but it it reminded me of things that i knew you know what i'm saying and solidified those things um reminded me about who i am what type of person i am um it showed me some things that were deep down that i didn't know were in me for you know both good and bad but um but yeah, so it was a very useful experience. Uh, so I came out of that and, uh, well, I'm still in, but, you know, going through basic and everything. Came back um, and my wife was starting her own business. Uh, she started a brow company. So she does like microblading and okay, stuff nice. like that. Yeah. Um, and she's fire because she's actually an artist. So she like she knows how to like get them brows yeah. browing so uh, so it's like a family of creatives right yeah now. absolutely okay, yeah cool um and so she started her business and i was sitting there with um like a half illustrated comic book that i was 
struggling to really like wrap my head around like how am I gonna be putting out comics that type of thing mm-hmm. and then I looked at her and I was like hey how'd you get your LLC like how did you do that and so then she sent me the information for it whatever got my LLC February 1st of 2022 um and with that I uh literally so like the day before that January 31st I set up my website and everything and um and then i i had a webtoon that i had worked on with a a, an associate of mine who lives in dc and we entered into like a webtoon contest or whatever um but i was like you know what let me i'm starting this company let me just throw this webtoon into onto some pages i can use that as like my first product so that that's your your first question was yeah what was my first actual title technically it was a it was a uh, an adaptation of of the webtoon that I made, which was called Rem Shadow Work, and uh, that was kind of like a psychological mind bender um, that followed a a guy named Mendel in a fictional Middle Eastern country who could see people's um, demons, basically. Um, but it it was it was really a story about like mental health. Okay. So, like, he could see the like a spirit of depression or anxiety or oh shoot, how dare you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he could see like you know these things in in the story they're called nightmares. So he he could see all these all these things and he would um and he had this uh spirit being that was called a guide, basically an angel, um that would he would like and he would fight these um these demons or whatever. So. That was like the, that story. So just from the, the thing that I've seen on your social media, on your website, in other interviews that you've done with other media outlets, it seems like your content is very like sci-fi heavy yeah. uh, and also very futuristic. Yeah. Um, where does that influence come from? Uh, that's just my cup of tea. I, so Halo was my favorite story for a large portion of my life. Like, I will never disrespect that friend, even though it might deserve some some poop getting thrown at it sometimes right sure. now. I'm never going to be the one to do it because it's Halo. Like, see, how dare you? <laughs> yeah. See, I came in late into Halo. Um, well, I can't even say late, but uh, I came in probably more so around Halo 2 than Halo 1. And then oh, I okay. dropped back to Halo 1 and it took off from there. Yeah. Um, I... You know, I got the books, yep. like all that. Um, so I under I understand the the influences and going back to when we noticed you at Con, you had a a whole display up for, uh, you know, for your your business and what was the, um, what was the book you had displayed at Des Moines Con again? Yeah, so I had so coming from Rem Shadow work, that was like a limited limited time thing just cuz I was starting my business. Um and then I did a that was a good segue question. Uh and then I did another webtoon which is still up and then I released uh Lost with All Hands. And that that is like what is quote unquote my first um title cuz it's like still out and sure. continuing to sell it. Um but it's also so that was one of the ones that I had um and that that is an introduction into my comic book universe um i was testing my uh my systems and and my my sales pipeline and like all that stuff um but then also kind of testing what i can do so like i actually made a song for that that was themed around that title um i made a, a motion comic um so you know just trying different stuff out sure um so that was the so that's like on paper what I'll say is the first one and then that and the first issue of my flagship series Aru and Duat. So those were the two that I had at Des Moines Con. I remember seeing them and um before Austin had seen you I was like I had come across it, noticed you were talking with some people saw that it was like the first black um mm-hmm. you know comic own you know yeah. comic base and uh the artwork caught my attention because it reminded me a lot of um, this web series called Genlock. Hmm. Um, it's done by Rooster Teeth. Uh, Michael B. Jordan has a, a production in it. Really? Yep. Um, 
Just the artwork was pretty. I don't know. I would say reminiscent of it. What's it called? Genlock. B G E N L O C K. Oh, gotcha. I see that. Well, that's pretty sick. It's Michael B. Jordan got what, dude. That's... It's dope. Oh wait, is this on Netflix? Um, I don't. It might be. No, I think it was something else that looked like this. On it was Netflix. on a. It, I know it's on a streaming service. It's on Crunchyroll yeah. and HBO Max, apparently. I think the first two seasons. Sweet, I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, I yeah, it it, it does have a similar uh, a similar thing. If when it, when I get mine animated, I'm not gonna do the 3D though. The 3D. Animated, I, yeah, yeah, I get that. Then that that has to be warped. done tactfully, like right. So you seen Halo Legends? Yeah. Okay, I, so that was the first Blu-ray I ever owned. But oh, perfect, good answer. Uh, <laughs> that so that the the one where Blue Team was like uh, infiltrating the ship or whatever, and like that was a three. Oh, the the like the hyper realistic one. Yeah, that is the first three D animation that I've seen in my life, and I loved it. So I thought all of them were gonna be like that, and then I started mm. realizing like, oh, oh, no, it's an anthology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, I started realizing like. Not all 3D animes look like that. Yeah. I liked how they did it, how that style of 3D anime, but yeah. where, where you get like, um, so like the Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball movies, when they do the 3D mm -hmm. stuff, like, I don't like the way that looks. Or even in like the Dragon Ball games, like, I don't like the way that looks. Yeah. It, some of it just seems so out of place with, yeah. uh, you know, you're, you got 3D artwork and then you got 2D characters and they try to make it look. Yeah. Over the top and it just, yeah. it, falls flat yeah it's it, yeah it, it just looks a little awkward um but yeah so i'll, I'll be uh i actually will be animating um aru and duat so uh, i i uh this will be like a triple confirmation now because i said it in my interview and then i just posted it on threads oh which by the way i just made a threads account um but, <laughs> we need to get on that as well I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, i'm a little hesitant but yeah so was i but i saw somebody post like hey don't um don't miss out on this like you did with tiktok or something like that and i was sure. like i definitely missed out on tiktok That's and i was kicking myself for it so i was like mm, just make it like yeah. yeah um but so i uh the triple confirmation here i i am talking to lion forge animation uh about animating um aru and Dua either my, so what i'm gonna pitch to them is a, a 10 episode series which would follow each chapter of the the comic series that i had planned mm -hmm. to to release um and with that probably i'll probably tell them like hey we should just produce this whole book with it as well um nice. so what what um what influences your work for like the comic even your music mm -hmm. um like can you say like uh what marvel yeah uh, dc um certain anime influences that like what, yeah. what really got you to like focus on certain things i th i think that i would say um like the big three well okay that's people would argue what that is for me big so like naruto dragon ball and um uh geez what was the other one um may I, maybe it was those two primarily and then like just a slew of other things but sure. as far as like what type of comic it was going to be you know um like how do the powers work are they going to stop in the middle of battle and explain what they just did type of thing you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. is it going to be an american style story with like anime aesthetic is it going to be you know what i'm saying so that type yeah. of thing but at the same time i'm in a unique position to be able to define what black comics and black animation look like and feel like and what the experience is like um so initially, I was not going to get into the nitty gritty of like, here are the three different schools of fighting technique and all this stuff. So in the first series, I don't really do that. I give you the basic like, here's how they have powers. Here's like what that's from. This is what's going on. But in the second series, I do kind of get into it a little bit. And I think for the rest of the stuff, I'm going to have like a lore Bible to really like for the like super that. nerds that want to dig into it but see cool. i've always liked the idea of like not overly explaining everything yeah. throughout the main stuff yep. but doing like your route which is hey this is th these are things that are already established yeah. it, 
you know, I'll put out some lore and that way yeah. you can look into it separately and really get into the backstory and world building there. So I, I had been telling people at Des Moines Con everywhere I go, I, I release my comics and I'm going to be releasing them in this certain way for that reason of having the main series, Aru and Duat, that's just going to be the meat and potatoes. This is what the story is. All of my spinoffs are surrounding this. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. In the spinoffs, I'll do a little more world building. Sure. I'll say, hey, okay, this is um, Bishop Squad. They're on this uh, this moon around this planet. This is what's going on here. Drop some Easter eggs, you know, stuff like that. Even that's not like super lore heavy. It's just like world building. Now, as far as like just vomiting lore, I'm going to make a lore Bible. Um and, and I mean, that's just really because I make all these rules. Like I literally sat down and I understand the reason why we can't time travel right now because of the equation for time dilation. And the reason I know that is because I was trying to figure out how the FTL travel is going to work in my comic universe. And so I was trying to figure out how to make it realistic. And because I need to know, okay, if these characters are here on this planet and this planet starts getting attacked, how long is it going to take them to get from here to here mm -hmm. without it being like a continuity error? Because I hate continuity errors. Sure. Oh, my God. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I, dude, I'm with you. <laughs> so that's the type of stuff where it's like the lore Bible. is gonna. It's going to have like a grid map of the galaxy. It's going to have, um, you know, like histories of the, the different species and um, all types of stuff. But also a way that I'm wanting to tell some more, I'm actually working on a, a video project right now that I'm going to put up on my YouTube. It's going to be styled as like a, um, what is that? An onboarding video for a recruit into the, uh, the space exploration program that is in my comic. And that's cool. And, I like that. And idea. doing that, it's going to tell the story of humanity of like what led up to the events of the comic. Sure. Why we're settling other planets. Um, and long story short wars and stuff, but, sure. um, but it'll give you like the, you know, the specifics in the comic universe. Why Trevor had asked about influences and there was something that yes. I, I saw you, um, talk about not on only on your website, but in other interviews where black characters are un, underrepresented mm -hmm. in, in, especially in comics and other media mm -hmm. like that. Um, you had mentioned that a lot of the times it's, it's not authentic. Yeah. It's 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 black stereotypes. So yeah. multifaceted question here. Mm -hmm. What what are some media or whether it's comics or video games or manga or movies, to television shows that you feel is a authentic representation of what it means to be black in in America, and 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 yeah. what are other representations that aren't so good that you feel yeah. is, is, is what you were talking about with yeah. it's, it's more of a stereotype and that sort of thing. Uh, boondocks off rip. I got to say boondocks is like a really good, and obviously that's like one side of the black community, but um, by and large, that's something that just about any black person could watch and be like, yep. <laughs> I know, <laughs> yep. I know at least three, four, five people that are like that. I, you know? I don't mean to, to cut in, but yeah, I remember being, I have had been in college. I'm sure. Um, staying up late, TV still on. Yep. I wake up and the intro theme is playing to Boondocks, and I was like, yeah. "Oh, this is yeah, this is unironically one of my favorite rap songs now. Yeah, it's yep. so good. And it's uh, their their theme song is it's all affirmations. It's all like positive affirmations, mm -hmm. which I love. Uh, but yeah, no, it's a Boondocks is a really good um template of like what black animation can be. Um, and that's just like a those are just like hood stories too. That's not even getting into like sci-fi and stuff like that, sure. which is where I want to pick it up and say, Hey, boondocks did everything amazingly. Let's take that template, that, that framework and plug it into sci-fi fantasy, mm -hmm. the, the things that we also love and are not represented. in. so, um, things that, uh, t titles and, and, and franchises that don't necessarily do it the best, I would say is like, I mean, a lot of people are aware of, <clears throat> the debacle with um the gungans in uh phantom menace uh with the misa like it is which i i yeah. thought was hilarious but like <laughs> but it, it it was slightly problematic um then there's uh so i mean just by and large in sci-fi you'll see this this theme of writers wanting to take things from black cultures and and 
transplanting them into the to these alien races and so they're they're taking like the cool stuff about black people and they just don't want the black people you know what i'm saying sure so keeping the those two things together and displaying them but then you know they'll have all almost all the white characters in the story that are, are are the you know are almost all the human characters i'm sorry are, are are white and then all the aliens have these black cultures and it's like okay which i'm not even i i stopped being upset about that stuff because they're writing from their perspective sure. for their audience which is exactly what i'm doing i'm writing from my perspective for my audience so that is an issue i had with avatar not the last yeah. airbender but the movies that yeah. it's like the main characters, the protagonists yeah. are white, yeah. and then the alien race is is very heavily yeah. Native American. It's, it's yep. very clearly Native American or, or Native cultures. Yeah, I, well, I would say it's because I, I got, and this is probably like bias in, imprinting on it and stuff, but I I got very African vibes. Sure. So sure. like, but like you said, very similar actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely. So it's same thing. I thought of Avatar as well. the The fact that they wanted this very like tribal Native thing and it's cool it's beautiful it's mm-hmm. le- and and they just didn't want to. and then they have this white savior come in and like you know what i'm saying uh but me being uh having the spiritual walk that i do i i read a whole different story into that but um but yeah that what that again was also a little problematic where it's like dog you got and then the one uh latina chick that they have dies which that's kind of her mo and actually i stopped feeling bad because i saw this video about her saying some stuff about like i forgot what she said but it it was like borderline racist like it was towing it was towing the line of like let white people do like i don't know it was weird um so i i I, she should die in every movie now but (laughs) (laughs) not in real life but just every movie like you can you can die um but yeah, no, it's just they they had that thing where it's transplanting these these ethnic cultures onto an alien and then not having yep. actual ethnic human beings in the story. Yep. Um yeah, I think that's weird. So, okay, uh to kind of piggyback off that, um as far as how you're going to portray pretty much anything you do, um are you going to go the route of making it primarily uh, black people um, yeah. and, and stuff like that? Yeah. Like kind of like the Jordan Peele route or? Yep. yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's there's actually a, a, a lore reason why it's all black people. Oh, that's awesome. So okay. I, I didn't want it to just be like, ah, because F white people like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um there's a lore reason why uh, okay. and the the actual reason kind of is of white people a little bit like i said it out loud for the first time not too long ago and i was like "Ooh, that's kind of <laughs> <laughs> like that's kinda, i might want to change that but no i'm not going to change it like if, no. if black people can get portrayed as, as criminals and and slaves and all this yep. stuff for all these years then white people can be portrayed as racist like that's yeah period point blank i that's say awesome. F white people all the time yeah. and I, l- I look. The worst. I look right. Yeah. At, I look right at him when I do it, and he's like, "No, man, I get it. Like, I understand." Which, so I'm, I'm, I'm bicultural. So, like, my my mom is white, my dad's black. Like, I have a very rounded view on a lot of things. So it's not really f white people. It's just like some of the stuff that y'all do. Which yeah. I'm just saying, I get the vibe that y'all understand that. But yeah. for whoever's listening, there's, there, it's not an actual generalization sure if you it, what under what's understood don't need to be explained yeah you know what i'm saying i'm i'm half laotian yeah. but i didn't meet my father who who's from laos until i was 17 grew yeah. up in like very rural yeah. white yeah. iowa so like you know yeah. now that i'm older i'm like yeah i'm a, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> proud brown man right <laughs> yeah like i, I mean, was gonna ask you i was like you don't look anglo-saxon like yeah I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> no, I say the same thing. People are like, oh, I thought you were full black. I'm like, thank you. I, <laughs> um, no, yeah. So there, uh, I'll, I'll kind of give a little bit of spoilers, but it's not like super spoilers. Um, in the comic, there's uh, – so what happened – and this is going to be explained in, in the video project that I'll release um, this Real year. Real quick before you yeah. – with that video project, um, 
were you planning on animating that video project or were you going to ma- make it like a live action portrayal? No, nah, it, it's going to be kind of like a motion comic type thing okay. um, where it's going to be still images, but they'll like have some motion. And okay, then so, voice so actors. essentially just motion comics. That yeah. Okay. Awesome. I'll have to show you the motion comic that's like uh, yeah from his website on his yeah, YouTube. Yeah. It's it's so um, sick. But now, so I I did that when I made that one. I didn't plan to make an emotion comic when I got it illustrated. Okay. For the next ones that I'm doing, I'm planning on it. So now I'll have even more motion in it. So like the individual characters or like rocks or whatever will also have motion and stuff. So it'll look nice. a lot prettier. Yeah. Nice. Um. But for my for my project with Lion Forge though, that's gonna be a full animation. Okay. Um so yeah. But so in, in the in the uh w- what the title of this one that I'm doing right now is right now is just the um the what is it? The onboarding video. Mm-hmm. Um so for this onboarding video, it's gonna talk about um the different kingdoms that arose over uh over history. So between now and the next like 200 years i think there are um these super countries that end up getting formed um because all of these nations are like uniting into Mm -hmm. larger kingdoms and so um one of those is new rome and so new rome is the united states canada greenland um and then they invaded mexico so Mexico is occupied by New Rome. Okay. Um with with on the other side of oh and they they kind of strong-armed the European Federation into being part of New Rome. On the other side of that we have um what's known as PAWA, so the Pan-African Unity Alliance, mm-hmm. PAWA. I love that you already had the acronym set up for yeah. everything too. That's awesome. Bro, I'm telling you, I got lore for days. Dude, that's awesome. Check the calendar. Lore for days. <laughs> um so Pawa is the African Union, basically, as well as a fictional country that um my that the story kinda sur- uh, so the main the main character in, in my um main series is the princess from this country. So the name of the country is Watuhuru, which is Swahili for free people. And so Watuhuru is the result of a sovereign black nation in the United States. And so basically how that happened was there was a whole like political coup and everybody migrated, all the black people migrated down to these like six states, seven states down in the South. And all the politicians were in on it, everybody, because we were just tired of everything was going on. And then we just seceded from the union as they were like forming new Rome and like all this stuff was going on. There's like other political tensions going on. And, um, it was about to start a whole war. Originally I had a war breakout between Rome and, and Watuhuru. Um, but I decided to change that. So now it was, they just had their, they seceded from the union and then a giant friggin' meteor crashes right on Watuhuru and it makes it like undesirable to Rome. So they're like, ah, we'll let you have it. But, this it's it's not a meteor actually it's uh space debris but that's something that will be revealed in like a couple years um but so this space debris changed the properties of the country uh, of the the soil the the wildlife so like there's it, it's very actually avatar-esque there's like neon bioluminescent mm-hmm. foliage and um they have griffins like flying around so essentially what the way I, i'm i'm picking up on it is like it hits they're like ah you can have it because we think yeah. it's a, just trash and yeah. and because of the isolation like yeah. they grow up and yeah dude the- it it, it destroyed it destroyed the land at first sure and it made it undesirable because like the radiation and everything and so then rome was like ah see that's what you get for trying to haha so now nah, you made that bed live in it and then they 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 lived in it and about a year later the radiation ends up like um, and there's a whole other story that goes into that as well, oh, but, that's sick. um, yeah, I can't give that away, no, but, no, yeah, you're no. Good. <laughs> uh, but so that is kind of the, the origin story of Watuhuru. And so one of the effects of this space debris falling down is that it unlocks, um, this, this thing within the humans that are affected by the radiation. Now, here's the thing. There's something in the sun that has been absorbed by humans 
that has allowed them to unlock these uh, these cosmic abilities. Now, here's where it gets. Here's where the divide starts to happen, because white people don't have melanin or don't have as much melanin. They were not absorbing that stuff from the sun, and so it not only prevented them from having these cosmic abilities by and large. There may or may not be some exceptions to that, um, by and large. But it also caused like mental deterioration. And so they actually started going crazy. Like it was like an illness. And so what that represents is like racism. Cause I think people are genuinely mentally ill if if you're just like that racist. Mm -hmm. Now I've met people who are just ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Like th there's a difference between between being ignorant and then like knowing, like, no, I don't like you because you're black. Like that's you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but so that's what that represents. Um, and so then there's a schism and the white people are kind of quarantined and they're actually trying to help them. So Opawa is trying, they, they're like coming up with, trying to come up with a cure, trying to figure out how to get their brains back. Cause that's messed up. It's not their fault. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's, it's how they were raised or how they were, you know, you see, so there's always some kind of like real life parallel that I'm, I'm trying to draw something to. Um, but so that's the lore reason why the white people are not in space. I love that. It's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That sounds yeah. sick. So, yeah. so you primarily a writer. Yes. When you are, are finished with your story, yeah. do you outsource that to an illustrator most times? Yeah. So I, I, I can kind of draw, but like I have a vision and I know, and I have, and there's just something, not only from basic, but basic, this is one of the things that basic kind of brought out stronger in me as well as just having a standard of quality. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I know that like, this is the quality of the story that I wrote. The visuals need to match that, especially for a medium, like comic books and anime. Yep. Um, cause that's lit. Like people tell me all the time, like, dude, I saw the, I have this sign that I bring with me. You probably saw it at Des Moines mm -hmm. con. I have a sign that I bring with me and people see the artwork and they're like, yo, and then they, that makes them stop. And then they start asking questions. They learn about the story. They learn, oh, I was first black comic book and animation company. Absolutely. So like, yeah. so that standard of quality um is why i outsource it to uh to diff to artists um i i tell people all the time like i i got a big head but it's not big enough to wear all the hats so <laughs> i'm a like and i'm sure you can attest to this as well like i'm a total control freak yeah. right so we went to this and and not to throw shade on any of them mm -hmm. but we went to this des moines podcasters meeting um last month and i didn't realize how many podcasters in this area are using other people to produce their podcast mm -hmm. like they'll go into studios and they'll pay for studio time oh, yeah. all they want to do basically with their podcast yeah. is sit in front of a microphone yeah and then publish it you know and like a lot of someone else is yeah. doing the work and i just like all of the the graphics that you see like that's yeah. all that's all me like the logo yep. like all of the the branding and like we call ourselves the beautiful boys like all of this like dumb shit is all from like our heads right yeah. from trevor and i so then we're getting ready for des moines con and i know that i need a better design than what i can come up with and i go to my graphic designer friend emma yeah. and i'm like i have like when i close my eyes i can see like what i want it to look like and I have faith in you that like the words I'm telling you, the information I'm giving you, yeah. you're going to come up with something Absolutely. that looks like that. Yep. How do you, you take your baby, right? Yeah. You take this thing that you created yep. and you're like, I'm sure just like me, like I close my eyes and I can see the story. Yeah. How do you turn over that control that it's like, okay, this is also yeah. your baby now too. Yep. And what are the conversations that you're having with the illustrator to make it, sh make sure that like their vision and your vision is a, like the perfect marriage? Um, I think ADHD helps a little bit out with this. <laughs> um, cause I, even though I may have a specific picture in my head, I'll either forget to say something or I'll forget that I had that particular picture. You know, if that's not the case, then, um, the times where I am intentionally, uh, not worrying about it. Um, it's really just knowing that there's it, things are so much better when there's a team, um, provided that the all the teammates are competent, which is why it's important to choose now when you skilled teammates. When you reach out to uh, you know our other artists, uh, you know illustrators to to do it, 
do you come to them with like your own like crudely drawn storyboards of like, hey, this is kind of the idea I got. Yeah. And then, and then uh, they work off that, or do you just trust them to? Yeah. So when I first started, I was writing it in movie script format, and I had no idea how many pages a comic was going to be at the end. Um, and then I learned that there is an actual comic script format, and I started using that. And it's it get it act that actually gives me more control because I know it's gonna be this many pages. But with that, you have to know you have to actually be visualizing even more what the page is gonna look like. So you have to know like, okay, in this first tier there's gonna be two panels and the left panel is gonna be slightly bigger than the right panel. So in the and then in the script you have to describe all that for the artist. Gotcha. Um I typically don't get too in depth with that because the artists that I work with are experienced enough to know what's going to look good. And I believe in staying in my lane. I'm sourcing this to you. So I, I'm going to trust your professional mm -hmm. uh, opinion on it. Um, so that's kind of to both of your guys's questions of how do I, kind of relinquish some of that control as well i'm still in control of it it's sure, just sure it, it, it's it, their free will is working within my parameters so regardless of what they do it's gonna and a lot of time i think 99 percent of the time it looks better than what i what i thought that's so i was gonna make that point too like yeah. the t-shirts that we had at des moines con yeah. like i had this vision in my head and then she took it and ran with it mm -hmm. and once we got back the final artwork i was like nah, it's, that's so much better than i and that's exactly why it's so important to just let them yeah you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. just let it's scary but that's why it's scary i don't think that that doing that is scary because of a negative i think it's scary because our, our greatest fear is of success is mm -hmm. of something working um there's there's that inner mediocrity that screams every time we wake up and we start being productive in and doing this so it's the same thing of like not holding on to that control and doing something that is going to birth something great and, and in this instance you know letting somebody else mm -hmm. have their creative freedom that that ego the the i don't know which side of yin and yang is the the dark side but that side the you know the human condition it screams every time we do that and sure. i think that's sure. the fear that we're feeling is the fear of greatness, not necessarily of something bad happening. Sure. I also wanted to ask you about, um, like your, your company's core values yeah. and the platinum rule. Yeah. Um, I just thought it was fascinating. So can you talk a little bit about that and, yeah. and where that comes from and, and how that drives what you, what yeah. you plan to do in the future? Yep. So the, the company is based on, um, what's known as the Nguzo Saba, which is the seven pillars of Kwanzaa. And so in the holiday of Kwanzaa, it's a, it's a week, a lot of people get it mixed up with Hanukkah, but, um, it, it's a week long celebration of black culture, black ancestry, things of that nature. And it, these seven principles, um, are each commemorated on each day of that week. Um, so for instance, the first day Umoja, which is unity, it focuses on being one on, on celebrating the diversity within the black community and, and, you know, looking at everybody across the spectrum from black Americans to the Caribbean, to Africa, to Afro Latinos, um, uh, Blasians, you know, ev everybody on that spectrum. Um, and so each, each day has that principle. And so that's what the, the, uh, the seven pillars are. And that's what the company is founded on because the concept and holiday of Kwanzaa is about Pan-Africanism and that's what Senso Studios is promoting in the comic book world. Um, it's, it's what I want it to be is a, a platform for specifically black voices, but minority voices in general um, to be able to come in and tell their stories from our perspective i just saw this post the other day about uh on fourth of july in muscatine they had like some parade and they had some white lady that was dressed up as a native and and they had her like 
t- her hands tied in a rope and they were on a horse pulling her, pulling her behind them or something like that. And I can see how like small town white Iowan would think that, oh, we're paying homage to how history actually happened. But you're not thinking about the trauma that minorities continue to go through and how that might be a bit insensitive. Sure. So that's why it's important for us to tell our stories. So it's that type of thing where it's we, this is our space and our time to tell our thing for us, like for us by us type of thing. Yeah. Um, and of course, everything that we do, white people love. So, which is fine. You know, that's, that's good. That's big fan. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big fan. <laughs> which, yeah, like, no, it, I'm not even saying that in a negative way, you know, but it, it, it's, uh, uh, so that's why it's not really a worry for me of like, oh, you want to start like a black comic company in Iowa? Like, I mean, white people love what I do. So, yeah. <laughs> sure, <no>. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then talk a little bit about the, not the golden rule, but the yeah, platinum, the platinum rule. rule. So it, that concept started off as kind of like a teehee for me, but um, then the more I thought about it, I was like, ah, that's actually good. Um, so the platinum rule is built off of the golden rule. So love your neighbor as you love yourself, but inherently to do that, you have to know how to properly love yourself. So the platinum rule is essentially to love yourself, you know, in a healthy manner. Um, and I'm not talking about this new age, like oversaturation of self care and, and self love and basically self worship, Mm -hmm. but taking care of yourself. Um, self love also looks like, you know, making sacrifices and hard decisions. And sometimes self love hurts, um, because it's what's good for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, just, just that type of, that type of thing. And, um, and then once you, you know, know thyself. So once you have that down, then you can more accurately look towards the outside and and see like, okay, that you, it'll enable you to be able to empathize with others. Um, it'll enable you to, to be able to give people tough love when they need it, you know, all that type of stuff that like, Hey, if I was in this situation, what would I hope that they did? Yeah, so that's um, that's the platinum rule. Just uh, knowing how to love yourself so that you can love others. And yeah. And then where did the name Essential Studios come from? So Essential is an ancient Ethiopian storytelling art in which the storyteller would draw on folded pieces of paper. Okay. Which sounds a lot like the world's first comic book. Yeah. Right. And yeah, so yeah. it was very fitting that, you know, Ethiopia being a an African nation... I'm starting a black comic company paying homage to, you know, Pan-Africanism, African ancestry, but then also the origins of comic books, basically in humanity. Cause that, that was thousands of years ago. Um, and not to say that it was like completely unique to Ethiopia, but probably one of the first, like, you know, um, at least the first recorded instances of what we would know as a comic book. So, So that that's where um, the the term since it came from, and there was an actually an Ethiopian uh, comic creator um, who had put out on his Twitter uh, basically an open invitation of like, "Hey, black people, we have um, history here, and like this is th- th- I think that we should call our comics since ills because if you look at you know Japan, they have mangas. If you look at China, they have you know their version of it. Korea, they have their their sure. own name yeah, for yeah. it. Um, in America, it's comic books. So for the Pan African diaspora, we have sense ills. Makes complete sense yeah. to me. You know why do we always have to conform to other for sure cultures stuff and things and like why can we? Well, actually, I know why because every time we make our own thing, friggin' it gets taken. But um, sorry. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so it, it is a good way to get back to to the to the to our ancestry to to our roots without being um, without doing anything that nobody else is doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that that's why I was saying like, yeah, they're making stories for them by them. Mm-hmm. I would not expect it to come out any other way. So we're going to make stories for us by us. And they better not say a single thing because yeah. <laughs> everybody else does this. Like what? Yeah. Everybody has a problem when black people do it for some reason. And then uh, one more question for me. I'll turn it over to Trevor, but I didn't forget. <laughs> uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. Yes. Is oh. an anime. I'm so glad you said this. So, in my journey of being one of the people 
in one of the companies who are going to define what black animation is, um, that's one of the conversations that comes up. Is it an anime? So you can tackle that from different perspectives, right? Um, even looking at like boondocks or something like that. An anime is a Japanese animation style, mm -hmm. right? So technically, if you're going to be the strictest on like what the definition is, anything that's not originally Japanese is not anime, regardless of like the style. Like sure. if in, sure. if it's from Japan, it's an anime. Or you can look at it from the artistic side of like, oh, this art style was is anime. Okay, well then in that case, anything can be anime as long as it's that art style. But even within anime, there are different art styles. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So in that sense, anything could be anime. Um, then there's like the pop culture understanding of it, which is it's not a cartoon because it's for adults, so it's anime. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, either way you slice it, people will have their own thing. I would say that um, if if there was a word for Chinese, because Avatar is actually like a Chinese mm -hmm. um, thing. I don't know what kind of company made it, whatever, but like the the inspirations and the stuff from yep. it is Chinese. Yep. So if there was a word, if there is a word that I, I'm unaware of for like Chinese animation, whatever, that's what it would be, I guess. But for all intents, what is it? All all, all intents and purposes. All intents and purposes. Thank you. Um, I would say it's anime. Yeah. yeah. Like just for the just for the the um the convenience of conversation. Saying, oh, yeah, it's an anime. But then even with that, it's kind of like, okay, well, then why do people say, oh, it's black anime? You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. Well, it's just anime. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's why I'm saying, like, if you're going to get deep into the conversation, then there will be an actual word for it, like, since it. Or if you're just, like, having a casual conversation, like, oh, no, I was reading this manga. It's a black manga. Like, you know, whatever. I don't see an issue with that. As long as people know what you're communicating to mm -hmm. them that's what matters people get so hung up on semantics and like what word you use and that's kind of the issue with like society right now is everybody gets hung up on every little thing like oh that's politically inaccurate like bro okay you know what the flip i'm saying though right okay so let's move on and ha actually have a productive conversation sure same thing so like don't get hung up on like well technically it's not anime because it's not from japan and it's all good. like bro shut up you know what i'm saying it's an animation it's it's not spongebob like yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's freaking demon slayer you know what I'm saying? Like, it, you know, uh, or boondocks. Like, that's... How are you going to say that's not anime, bro? Like, come on now. Good boy, said. I mean, when you got Huey putting on an electrical glove and that whole yeah. fight scene, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's anime. Come on. Yeah, he definitely brought, like... he he Huey puts to rest any argument about boondocks being anime or not. Like, yeah. he definitely <laughs> brought, like... Uh, yeah. Um, well... I mean, I, I don't know what what I could ask at this point. I mean, <laughs> is there I, any uh, any stories, any um, anything that we haven't talked about yet? I haven't asked about that we could um, lead questions into you talking about a story or a topic. Or? So actually, yeah. So I'm um, this is I I'm I'm changing my release schedule. I think I had a comic scheduled to release this fall. Um, and that was, that title was Twin Singularities. And that was going to be about two of the characters that are in Aru and Duat. Mm -hmm. Um, the artist, he's, he's in Brazil. I'm actually playing with, um, doing like traditional art. So he's drawing it traditionally and scanning it in. Oh, wow. And so I'm, yeah. So like kind of exploring with some stuff there. Um, but I think with this partnership with, uh, that I have with, um, NASCAR driver, Colin Garrett, I'm working with his team to make a, like a cyberpunk um tech wear aesthetic um like a rap for his car thing. A, or... a, a graphic novel oh okay um that'd be so sick yeah so but they are gonna they are talking about maybe making a an entire rap for his car that's, that's themed awesome. after the comic so my logo is going to be on his car for his race in october um and that's going to be used to promote our project together and stuff but they were saying like dude what if we just like wrapped the whole car in this like in the aesthetic of this yeah. graphic novel so colin's gonna be in the comic um you better get like some high-res image that you can just frame and put on the wall of like that car That'd oh be... yeah dude no yeah absolutely <laughs> um 
Yeah, no, there hit in his team. I actually I haven't even met him yet. I've been talking to his his team right now, but um, they're all super nice. They've told me he's very very gentle dude, like um, you know, very very chill guy. Um, but he he does a lot though. Like he so he works with uh, the military, and um, that's actually how our relationship was initiated. Me being in the guard, I was at this um this veterans entrepreneurship conference, and he has this um this program called the 1111 project and he's basically helping veterans um you, you know th that project focuses on that type of thing and so that's kind of there you know we're wanting to draw some relationship between that and the graphic novel mm -hmm. um so he i forgot where i was going with that but he uh oh he does a lot of stuff so he like he, he helps train um train like Navy SEALs and Marines and stuff on, uh, tactical driving before they go on a deployment. Okay. Um, he, in, in with that relationship, he like gets to clear rooms with them and stuff. And like, he does a lot of like badass stuff. Yeah. Like super chill, but, uh, or, but at the same time, he's super chill, um, is what I'm told. So I'll meet with him actually for the first time on Monday, um, over zoom and, uh, get to get to kind of actually talk with him. But, so that that whole relationship is going to be bringing forth this graphic novel um, called Regicide. And it's actually an old idea that I had and it's been sitting in the vault and I got to actually use it now. And I'm like, this is perfect. That's awesome. Um, so so Regicide is basically about these um, this group of mercenaries that um, w one, the main character, Shaka, he is... Um, trying to get back to his family who is on the continent of Africa and he is in what we know as the United States. There's different names for the countries. And sure. Stuff, but sure. Um, so he started this mercenary group to save up some money, yada, yada. He used to be in the military and then there was this whole like change of regime. And that's actually like a central point of the story is like, who are, who's the new president? Like what is going on here? So all the, all of the human soldiers got replaced by, by mechs. And so everybody's like, why would they re completely replace everybody with mechs? And then not only that, but they just kind of left all the veterans out to dry. So that's where the, the line starts kind of getting drawn to like the homelessness rate for veterans and um, just like the lack of support on the back end a lot of times gotcha. with veterans. Yep. Um, but then also um how minorities a lot of minorities join the military with these promises and stuff of stuff that they're going to get in return and that might not necessarily happen so there there's all of these unique angles and in, in real life dynamics that are that are playing into it i was going to ask about that so it sounds like a lot of your stories deal with these real life dynamics yeah. is there is there an issue or is there a part of your life that you're like i I want to tackle this in, in a story. I want to put this in a story. I just haven't figured out how to do that yet. Uh, none that I haven't figured out how to tackle okay. some, some things you, you just can't, um, you can't, or I'll say you can't do it tactfully, or maybe I don't have the product or the niche to tackle that. Sure. Um, or maybe it's just not my ministry. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just not, that's not my lane. There's a lot, there's tons of issues that I have an opinion on, whatever, but like, it's not really my lane to talk about that. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm called to. Um, so there, there, there's a lot of things, uh, that I could talk about that I don't think I'm going to, but, um, but as far as the things that I, I, what, what's the serenity prayer, the, to know the difference between what you can change and what you can't and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to change the things that you can't change. So just, I'm, you know, knowing the things that I can talk about, things that I can tackle. And I'm, and I'm writing about them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, pretty much writing about everything that I can. Do you have any plans down the road? And I'm talking like long-term, yeah. like after, after you release so much content uh, in terms of your comics, do you plan on diving into shows, movies, uh, games, anything, any sort of media like that? Yeah, so the company name is Sensel Studios, plural, and I did that with the vision of 
having a plethora of storytelling avenues. Okay. Um, being a gamer myself, absolutely would love to have a video game and absolutely would be part of making it because people mess that up a lot. Yeah. Um, also with, I mean, if there were to ever be like a live action, at anything for it, that gets messed up a lot. Sure. Um, so I would absolutely be a part of that. Uh, and even with something like that, like I would probably never let somebody try to do a live action adaptation of my main story. Maybe like, maybe create a new story that is set in the universe. Sure. Because yeah, some yeah. things you can't adapt to live, live action, like anime humor or like some of the power scaling, like that type of stuff. It doesn't work in live action. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work in novels, it, you know, like just books, like as I'm, as I was writing the book that I was talking about, I had this anime esque feel. And I was like, this does not translate to just book. You have to see it. Mm -hmm. Um, which was another one of the factors that led me to start making comics. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so there, there'll be all of those things. Um, cool. and that, yeah, I'm starting with this deal with lion forge right now. Uh, the my plan there is to have a 10 episode series and that's that's uh, or a, a 10 episode season because there's so in my in my universe the first four story arcs is really um one arc or the first four seasons my bad the first four seasons is really one arc sure um it, and i call it the demon wars arc so um oh, i guess we haven't even talked about like the main series so <clears throat> aru and <Duat> <laughs> follows um a warrior princess from earth named Azrael black and she is um she's the daughter of the king of watuhuru and so she is in she's part of the space colonization project that the onboarding video project is for um and that is called the koopa initiative um in swahili the word koopa means ascension and so the koopa initiative has seven fleets and they each have a target planet that they are going to settle a colony on and so Azriel is part of Fleet 7, and Fleet 7 is actually very unique and special for a couple of different reasons. One, they have the only AI that has a mobile platform, that has a mobile body um, in all of AI, in all of the AI that exist. Seven is her, her name. Um, she's the only one that has a body. And that's for a reason. So she's she's part of a, um, it's kind of like the CIA of, of the story, um, but it's called Special Tactics or Spectac. Okay. And she is the commander of Special Tactics for Fleet 7. Um, and, but that's on paper. Like it practically, she's really like the commander of Special Tactics because of her unique status as an AI with, with a body. All of the other AIs are like kind of look up to her. Like, that's what we aspire for. Okay. Um, but she's very humble about it. So, but so anyway, seven is, um, she's like a, a spook, you know what I'm saying? She's like this kind of CIA agent of shield type like of black ops style. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But she plays it off very well. Cause she's very personable. Um, so she is one of the things that makes the fleet that makes fleet seven unique. But then also the reason why she's in that fleet is because, there's there's a particular reason why fleet seven is going to this planet um that gets revealed in the series okay and it was like all the other ones all the other planets are like oh this is habitable it's not too far from um from earth which in the comic is named al, al so al is a uh is an ancient word for uh that means the cradle of humanity oh, okay so al -Kebulan, um from or from there going to these other planets they're just like it's within distance uh it's habitable you know that type of thing but panthera the planet that fleet seven is going towards there's some special stuff going on there um and so then they said hey seven hop on uh hop on hop on fleet seven and you know whatever whatever and do this so yeah uh so yeah th that fleet is special so that's why that's the main story okay um and I, I like, I personally like that that is how it happened because the king of Watuhuru knew this and he sent his daughter in that fleet and she has some character development of like coming out of his shadow 
um, and figuring out life on her own for the first time. Um, and she, there was actually, there was a coup in Watuhuru, uh, a few years, maybe like a decade prior. And she has a lot of like PTSD and stuff from that. Um, I'm not going to say it's her fault, but she may or may not have been manipulated into doing some things that, gotcha. that causes. Um, and so, oh, fun, fun fact though, tie in my, the other title lost with all hands. Um, the main character talks about his father dying in the coup. And so, oh shit. Okay. Yeah. So it's all connected. I so, love that. I love that so much. But I don't like to shove it in people's face. Like, it's going to be the type of thing I don't like how, and I meant to bring this up earlier. I'm sure that One Piece is a phenomenal series, but I'm not going to watch it. Same. <laughs> two, I, I two, it's oversaturated with world building and lore. Yeah. Um, but what I am taking from from what I know about it is don't be scared to play the long game. So with the Easter eggs, with the with how everything ties in, I'm dropping nuggets early on. And then as time goes, then people will realize like, oh, okay. Or as somebody like rereads something, they're going to yep. say, oh, I didn't even realize that back then. You know what I'm saying? So um, I like when those Easter eggs are actual Easter eggs. Yeah. And you're not slapped in the face with it. Yep. I'm a huge professional wrestling fan. Yeah. And I feel like there's a lot of times where there's callbacks yeah. and they have the announcers be like, oh, do you remember when that? And it's like, yeah. just yes, let it happen. We got yeah, it. we do. Yeah, yeah we got us, it. That's why us, they did it. <laughs> let us get it ourselves. Yeah. Like, they dumb it down so much. I don't like having my my intelligence insulted. Yeah. It's just let it happen. Let yep. you know. Um, and if people don't get it, then they don't get it. But yep. the ones that the ones invest that do. In the time and the effort to watch all of the content, like, yeah. let them come to that we'll on their see, own. We'll see. And there's, there's also, because like, as far as like, marvel stuff um i watch a lot it's a lot more cost effective and faster to just watch videos on, about like certain story arcs or whatever in comics so that's what i do um uh, but they will th those videos will explain that stuff like you don't have to do it in the story or in the wrestling match or in this like if people who actually care they're gonna look it up and they're gonna find out mm -hmm. so i i agree with that but yeah so that that's um that's kind of my approach with like the easter eggs and how everything is connected i'm taking a, a bit of a, a a long long game approach to it and um the main characters from lost with all hands may or may not appear in season two of the main uh of the main franchise so <clears throat> and there may or may not be some animosity between Jackson, the main character from Lost with All Hands, and Azrael, because he may or may not have this idea that she killed his dad. I love it. So, if, uh, <laughs> if someone wants to Fuck, check out, dude, that sounds sick. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> if someone wants to check out these stories, um, what's the best? What's the best avenue? Yeah, so I have a website, sensilstudios.com. That's S E N S I I L. Don't forget the two eyes. Um, and then studios.com, um, that'll take you to, to my, my, uh, my website, the landing page will have you right where the comic books are at. Um, if you scroll down, there's webtoons that are free to read. Um, the, the motion comic is free to watch. Um, just subscribe, drop a comment, all that stuff, uh, share it, you know? Um, and I, I give free content because I don't like financial barriers. Uh, if I could do this for free and, and have my bills paid for and all that stuff, like I absolutely would. Sure. Um, but, uh, and for people who do want to support, I have a Patreon that I just started. Get You get some free merch. Uh, I'm going to figure out how to keep track of everything so that I can give out free, uh, free comic books as well. Mm -hmm. um, Cause my schedule, I'll be dropping two, two new titles every year. So subscribing to the Patreon will get you those two, two new titles automatically. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's one way you can just do like a one-time donation, which is available on my website as well. Just go look at the website. Just go check. Yeah, just go check it all <laughs> out. There's all kinds of stuff on there. Um, yeah. Oh, and I I run Kickstarter. So I did my first Kickstarter uh, last year, no, earlier this year in March, and uh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. So I I like doing those. So if y'all want to get in on some Kickstarter stuff. Definitely stay posted. Um, I was going to have one, I think, at the no, at the beginning of next year because I was planning a, a motion comic um, for the spring. Mm -hmm. um, but this deal with Lion Forge that I'm working on, I'm probably just going to like 
hyper focus on that. Sure. Um, sure. <laughs> so I don't blame you. Yeah. No. Nah, uh, but it, I mean, but it's not like they're buying out my company or anything. So right. like there will still be Kickstarters and stuff in the future. Um, but yeah, so that, that's the website. You can get me on, uh, any social media really. I'm most active on Instagram. Uh, it's at Sensil Studios, same spelling. Um, you can go, I'm highly Googleable, highly Googleable. Uh, I'm, I've said that so many times at this point, like it needs to be made a word if it's not, cause <laughs> I'm highly Googleable and I'm it's a fun to word to more, say. more Googleable. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a very nice, uh, very nice. I've had like, cause it gives you your analytics and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I've seen it all. I think I'm coming up on like 2000. I don't know if it's clicks or searches or what, yeah, but like yeah, yeah. people have seen me on Google close to 2000 times and i was at the farmer's market actually not too long ago and, and somebody came up and was like dude i just was like googling for for comic book stuff and you popped up and i just saw your uh your website or whatever because yeah. of that. so i'm like dude google is a plug and it's completely free to do that so definitely get on yeah that. yeah i need to i need to make us more more googleable i think if you put in ice cream sunday like yeah. sunday the day of the week yeah um that we're like the first thing that comes up of course yeah but like i i want to be synonymous with like if someone types in like iowa podcast yep. it's like there we so are baby all, all that is search engine optimization yep so get you a good seo expert um, I actually have a friend who did SEO work for a tech company, so she kind of explained what it was, showed me how to do it, and I was like, okay, so basically just like hot words, like yeah. keywords, hot topics, yeah. whatever. Cool. Too Someday easy. I'll have to reach back out to you on Instagram, and we'll talk about like yeah. how LLC works and all that stuff, because like- Oh, it's super simple. I got it. Well, but like yeah. now that I have like the business permits and, yeah. and a bank account- what do we do now? Well, let's talk so, about it right now. That's perfect. How much time we got? We can, I, I don't care. I, if y'all don't <laughs> care, I don't care. I'm literally, cause this like financial literacy, that's literally like one of the biggest things that needs to be taught in school. And it's not, I agree, but 100%. they want to teach friggin' Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> I don't even remember what the, what is that? A squared plus B squared. Yes. It, equals C it's squared. C squared. Yeah. I think okay. that, yeah, okay. I think so. I've never used that in my life. <laughs> no. I don't even know what it's for. I just know it's algebra. I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know when I've ever used algebra, but so the LLC stuff, like that's very, what, what people want to do. This is free chicken right here, which I want to do It's <laughs> <laughs> free chicken. What y'all want to do is get, you want multiple LLCs. You want a parent company and then you want that parent company to own the, the actual business that you want to do. So I have to go back in and, and do this because I was just hasty with doing mine. I was like, nope, I just sure. need to get my LLC, whatever. Yep, but that's kind of where I was at. But what you want to do is have a, a larger parent company. So uh, Austin Enterprise. Mm -hmm. Austin Enterprise owns um, the podcast LLC, the whatever other LLCs you want. And the reason why a limited liability company is it's to limit liability. And so you get extra layers of protection um, but then also there's other, uh, financial things that, that, um, play, you know, it's an asset to, to you. Um, also it can help you with like, so, uh, if you have your, you can treat your parent company as you in a sense. Mm -hmm. So like whenever you buy a car, you buy it in that parent company's name and then you can lease it to the podcast company. So if you need to drive somewhere, the, the podcast LLC is like renting it from your parent company. Yeah, so yeah, then yeah. that way you can write it off and you see what I'm saying? Like yeah, there's yeah. all that type of stuff. So you want, you want to have that set up like that. Um, and it's super for anybody listening who doesn't know it is very inexpensive to get your LOC. Right. It's 50 bucks in Iowa. Yeah. Um, at least the way that I did it. I don't yeah, know if there's that's more exactly than one how way. I did yeah. too. Yeah. It was uh, easy. Do it. It's even if you don't want to own a company, just get one because there's, there's financial uh, benefits to mm -hmm. it. There's, there's a lot of benefits to doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, also having like another line of credit that, you know, you'll have a business credit and then like your personal credit. And so that, that can be very advantageous as well, but yeah, no. Yeah. So I, I will, I will go off for awesome. a minute on that. Cause no, that, I like, appreciate no, it. that's, uh, my, my dad, uh, he's, he's, I've never seen him clock into a job in my life. He's, he's uh, been self-employed for, I mean, I'm 26, so he's been doing it for a minute and uh, he just all kinds of books. And when I was younger, me and my siblings and cousins, whatever, we'd be on our way to like Minnesota for something or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, just going on vacation and we're listening to audio books and 
just all this type of stuff. Nine year olds talking about assets, liabilities, um, awesome. the the different types of business, so like a paper business, uh, uh, real estate, um, being self employed, or what's the difference between like a corporation and and being self employed, mm-hmm. and like you know earned income and passive income, like a nine year old knowing all that stuff. And I'm sitting here thinking like, nah, dude, I just want to write books. Like <laughs> I don't need to know all this. And then lo and behold, and that's one of the things circling back to when we started the podcast. You see how that happened. Things have just always been getting weaved into yep. me yep. to get me everything that I need to do this. That's why I'm so confident in what I'm doing because I look back. It's almost like Slumdog Millionaire. Like every time there's an issue or something, if I don't know it, I know who to call. Like that's, I was just going to say that. So like I went to school to be a journalist because I had no idea what else I wanted to do. I went as yeah. an undecided major and then I fell into journalism and started a podcast a long time ago, took many, many years off. And then he and David, who we used to have uh, co-host this podcast, they were like, we should bring it back. And then I was like, I don't know. Like, it was just, story. I was, I was up his ass for years. Dude, it was about just like, it. like the, the podcast in its original form in 2016 was just like, uh, it was just to make my friends laugh. Yeah. Like there was no rhyme or reason to it at all. And then when we brought it back, I was like, all right, it has to have, I don't want it to have a theme. I don't want it to be just video games or yeah. just movies or whatever. Right. It has to have a theme. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to help tell people stories. Yeah. And I'm like, that's journalism, you dumbass. Like, that's, that's what you, that's what you know. And, and so like, I obviously watch a lot of YouTubes about like how to set up the right equipment and right. how to kind of downscale. Cause I had this big, like 20 channel mixer that I carried around everywhere to take up this whole table. And I was like, I don't need all that. So like, right. I did a lot of research and I talked to like my old journalism professors and I was like, how do I, how do I do this? And so it's all those connections that I made 12 15 years ago that Mm -hmm. you know then we got the blessing of ming he's like hey this is all great did you meet any cool people at at con like any of the the guests or celebrities or anything yeah yeah so i actually met with marquand ross yeah um he the coolest for yeah yeah. Uh, for anybody who's not good with names he was um he played the dude in walking dead uh he was the new red skull um and he played Ultron in What yeah, If. Yeah, yeah, he did play Ultron in What If as well. Um, I said the dude in Walking Dead, like there's not a bunch of them. <laughs> uh, he, what was his name in Walking Dead? I knew you were I mean, gonna ask that, and I can't remember. He was, he was the dude that got his hand cut off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll look it up to make sure. I know who you're talking about. Um, <laughs> it's funny because after the con ended, uh, we come to find out. So we found out Sunday morning that. Uh, well, okay. So, so Saturday we talked to Ming, um, found out Sunday morning when we talked to Ming again, that he went out doing karaoke with all the guests, what? you know? Yeah. And he was like, you guys took, could have totally came out and I'm kicking myself. I was like, fuck doing karaoke with like, right. Ash catch him and yeah. fucking Joel from last of us. Like, yeah. bro. That would have been sick. Right. That's exactly the opportunity that I... W- well, okay. So I actually had a good opportunity already, but that would have like been the icing on the cake. So I spoke with Mark Wand or Mr. Ross or however he wants to be. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but I spoke with him and um, I basically asked, I showed him a copy of the comic and I was like, hey, I got this thing with Lion Forge in the works. Would you want to voice act on something like this? He was like, I mean, th- and this made it even better because he looked at me and he was like, D- he immediately wanted to say yes. But he was like, I mean, is there a space for me in something like this? And I was like, bro, I will literally make space for you. Like, there's other characters that are not black, you know, like the aliens and stuff. You can be a bad guy. How about that? You know, I, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, yes, actually. And I, I actually I did think he would make a really good um, he would do a really good voice for the villain. Um, it was this like huge Thanos esque uh, type of character. Um, but Mark Juan does phenomenal voice acting work. Yeah. So I think he could really make a good, like menacing. Oh, um, for sure. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't necessarily want like Josh Brolin's voice, but that's just the character is a Thanos esque right. character. Right. But I, whatever Mark Juan Ross would do with it, like I, I'm sure I would be blown out of the water. 
um, I'm going to use this clip and I'm going to send it to him and say, yeah. see, I really actually want you. <laughs> 100%. But uh, no, yeah, so I, I talked to him and about that and he's down. And so I was like, how do I get a hold of you? He was like, they just, just hit me on my Instagram. Yeah, whatever, so you know? so uh, we we talked to him very briefly and he he did like a little selfie video with yeah. us for the podcast. And then we were just like making our way down the row and – all, all we wanted to do was like hand uh, a business card with both of our podcasts. Yeah. Um. So we have ours, obviously, and then uh, Trevor's wife and friends have another show called Meatless Monday, which is like our sister podcast. Yeah. So all we wanted to do was just hand him a business card and be like, "Hey, you're a podcaster. We're a podcaster. We would love for you to just check out our show." Um. I didn't even get that far. Yeah. We were both in our like ice cream Sunday T-shirts. He was like, "Ice cream Sunday podcast in the building." And I was like, okay, so this is what this yeah. is. This is what we do. And he's like, oh, you're here now? And I was like, yeah. He goes, do you have your equipment with you? I was like, never leave home without it. Yeah. And uh, he was like, let's go. Yeah. So he was like, he invited himself on, on yeah. our podcast. Sick. And we so, recorded with him for probably like 30, 35 minutes. It's oh, awesome. dude, that's just, sick. Yeah, he was just like the nicest dude. So, yeah, he's very genuine. Yeah. So we did that. Um, And then the next morning we hit him up again and was just like checking in because he said he'd kind of reach out and see yeah. if he could get other guests on and we were like that'd be fucking dope yeah um so he came talked to meatless monday on on that following day on sunday wow. right um and after we got done with the con after we packed up and got got home and did all that uh we were just kind of hanging out at home and me and my wife were getting ready to get in bed because we were just exhausted. You mm -hmm. know, Con, Con will do that. Um, and she goes, how how mad do you want to be right now? <laughs> I'm like, why? She pulls up her phone, shows me um, a post that Ming did that saying um, yeah. him, uh, Ross, and uh, a couple other people were yeah. out doing karaoke. I'm like, where were they at? Let's go. Um, I don't remember the name of the place, but it's over on... Uh, Locust in East Village. Oh, they were downtown. Okay. Yeah. So I know so they're we, like we, when you messaged me, they were at Quentin's eating dinner. Wow. I think that's what it was. Yeah. And then you met up with them at Up Down and played arcade games. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. So, so Dude, I was at Up Down. Yeah. It might have been a different day, but so, I don't know. Yeah. So what happened was we missed them. We're like, hey, we're, we're looking to meet up with some friends. And they're like, oh, like no one's here. So. Like, all mm -hmm. right, cool. And we about gave up. So we're like, let's just swing down this way. Mm -hmm. We'll see. So we go to Locust Tap. Um, and didn't see him there. My wife crossed the street over to Up Down. She's like, I think we have a winner. I'm like, seriously? So we sh we go in. We hang out. We have drinks with Ross and Ming and, and play arcade games the rest of the night. That's pretty Man, sick. Man, look. I went into work hungover the yeah. next day, and it was the best feeling. Yeah. It, no, but it was sick. Uh, we we talked about so much. Yeah. It, so it was just cool to have like an opportunity to just like hang out yeah. and kind of build a relationship. So that's sick. When we found out we got Twin Cities, um, not long after you guys are going to Twin Cities too. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll see you there. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I was I'll gonna ask there. that. Matter of fact, oh, dude, see, we I I wish I would have. This would have happened like before. Oh wait, no, <laughs> I didn't confirm my Airbnb yet. What are y'all doing for lodging? Because like we I can have no, no idea. idea. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say we can all throw in on a like a three bedroom or something. Oh yeah, that let's do fantastic. that. Yeah, let's do it. Boom. All right, all right, we're in. That'd yeah. be sick. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, you up. But we're kind of hoping we run into Ming again. And since Kevin Smith, yeah. and everyone else is gonna. Marquand's be gonna be there at that one too. Yeah. 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 I uh I told I'm sorry hold on. I told him I told I was like bro you have the blackest name I've ever heard <laughs> Marquand <laughs> he's he was cracking up like you're invited Man, to the cookout bro <laughs> so so he had he had probably quite a few drinks before we got there and so when we got there and started talking uh we were talking about the um let's see what was going on at um we were talking about the AI that was killing its operators what um. So there was a whole thing where this um this drone AI was killing its operators because the operators were telling it not to um take out its targets. And the only reason why it was taking out its targets is because it got points. It was like a point based system, right? So it would take out the targets and then the operators were like, Oh, like this ain't going you know, this ain't going the way it should, so we need to have it stop doing yeah. that. Yeah. But 
it was also designed to get rid of any obstacles that would prevent it from doing that. Oh. So it would kill its operators. To be clear, it wasn't like a real thing that was happening. It was ah. it was um simulated that way. Ah. But um he had me go on this whole tangent and he's like like I started talking about it and he goes, Yeah, this dude knows what's up. Go ahead, start talking about it. <laughs> Man, you played a killer AI in Marvel. Right. Like, Literally, <laughs> you should know. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, that's crazy, and that's exactly how stuff like that happens. Yeah. Like, because people don't in our in our finite, and that's one thing I've learned about like Chat GPT. It will remember everything. <laughs> I'm actually so it, part of my world building. I'm I'm building out this fictional language. Um, it's the language of Watuhuru, and it actually uh, it eventually becomes the galactic language. Um, but I'm using Chat. GPT to help me do that and it remembers all of the rules like the grammatical rules all all that stuff that I input yeah and so with like a drone like that where it's like okay so I need to kill him and I need to stop anything from stopping me from killing him you're telling me not to kill him what do you think I'm about to do to you <laughs> exactly like, that's that's AI logic you know it's completely like binary pun intended so so I forgot to tell you um, one of the crazier things about that story is um, originally, so it would kill the targets, the operators would tell them not to do that, and um, so it would target the, I guess, satellites or, or whatever that bounce off from the operators to the drone, mm -hmm. and when they were like, hey, don't take out our, our own stuff, they were like, oh, well, then I'll just go to the source and take you... Like, Jeez. Yeah, it's it's wild. Um, if you want some good um, some good forms of media to kind of, uh, I don't know, draw a good comparison off of that. Yeah. Um, I I know it's a it's a popcorn flick kind of movie. Um, the movie Stealth. Mm, I and, think I I think I saw that when it came out. Yep, yeah, it's got Jamie Fox, yeah. um, Josh that's a, that's Lucas, an older and one. Jessica Bill. Yeah, Early great movie. Yeah, nah, same yeah, same that. idea. Um, Eagle Eye, Eagle Eye. Yep, yeah. yeah. and then uh, about eye level on you, Austin. It's the closest movie to you. Nope, up. Yep, that one. Pull that one out. Oh, Ex Machina. Oh, yeah. I still haven't seen this yet. Neither have I, but I need to. I've heard it's o great. Oscar yeah. Isaac amazing in it but like that ends just so just um like holy shit you know there's so i was talking about seven a little bit and uh she's an ai yeah and uh i i pulled a lot of her and like from from a lot of, a lot of different things but so like more directly ais and the stuff that's going on right now um and like what her programming was, was to emulate humans and organics. Um, luckily, she didn't take that and and be like, go to the evil like side of crazy. humanity. Yeah, yeah. but um, but she, her emotions do have her feeling isolated. She's like, I'm the only one of my kind. And so in a few years, you know, maybe season six or seven, or maybe it's a spinoff story or something. Um, she wants to change that. Now, and this may go into spoilers, so just, yeah, you know, to let me know if you can't say anything. Um, is it established that she is the first, or that they've done trial and error to build up to seven? So it is. Um, it's not explicitly stated that she is the only one to have a mobile platform or is it, I might like, I might kind of just drop it in there somewhere, but, um, but I don't think I do. It's more something that's going to have to be observed because there are other AI. And I think if somebody like puts two and two together, like, wait, why don't they have a body? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? But then seven, even in the first series, again, this is dropping those Easter eggs and stuff early on there's some stuff that she does that you're going to see her do and say and, and whatnot that you're going to be like, what, uh, what you doing there? Seven? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> what's, uh, what's going on with that? Um, <laughs> I like, I, I like that. And, um, one of the reasons why I like that is because like in Halo, yeah, they very clearly have the rule set. Like 
hey, destroy AI after seven yeah. years because yeah. then they go rampant. They go crazy. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, having having that kind of established rule set and then yeah. possibly making a spinoff of like explaining like earlier yep. forms or um, uh, another, another good um, thing you can look into is uh, when Halo 5 came out, mm-hmm. they created a... Uh, like a podcast or like um I, I i watched i listened to it the hunt the truth hunt the truth yep i yep. listen to that regularly yeah. like i'll I was, listen to it oh really oh yeah i i all so the time that actually is what got me to the point of making a motion comic because i was just gonna do like an audio narrative like that yeah and then i was like you know what i'm already gonna have the panels so like why don't so i just did you listen to season one and two or just i think just season one Oh, dude, you gotta listen I'll, to season I'll, I'll two. I'll go back and re re listen to the whole thing. Yeah, it, so, it was good. So, so season two kind of ties everything up, but it's not necessarily tied to the main Halo story like mm-hmm. they yeah. would like you to think it is. Yeah, but it 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 explains AI. I don't want to. Ex- yeah. I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah. But it it explains how they exist. Oh, like it. Okay, got you. Yeah. So yeah, no. And it has that, Mark Hamill in it. So. That, oh, that's sick. I know. Yeah. That. Yeah. No, that's one thing that I do love about. That's one of the few things that I do love about like the new Halo stuff is, they're they were they were really digging into the AI stuff, and I think that that would that they should have stuck with that kind of direction. I think they messed up by trying to bring in the Forerunner stuff, like. Yes, it's there, but don't beat the Forerunner stuff to death. Like I think the golden era of Halo is like the Human Covenant War. Like by far. So yeah. now that that's over, like j- you could have okay. Now there's all these factions of aliens and and stuff. I don't think the four versus... was necessarily a bad idea. I think the way they went about using the didact in Halo Four, right? Getting rid of him and then they brought him back. I think in the comic. In, in the comic, yeah. Th- that was so wasted. Yeah. But to have like their whole idea, the yeah. the big draw for Halo Five was, um. Spartans hunting Spartans, and they did away like they, they completely that scrapped idea. it. I, bro, I literally, I was like, dog, that is sick. Like watching Spartans fight each other, bro. The like that, Locke versus Chief. That was such a dope scene. Even though we all knew Chief was fun to give him the yeah. mitts, like oh, yeah. it was still fun to watch. And but then also that would open up for opportunity of maybe Chief's successor. Yep. And we could finally put him to dude's old. And then you get then you got the backstory of um, it, it's not explicitly said, but you have uh, Spartan Buck, yeah, who is ODST yep, from the ODST. now, now yeah. he's a Spartan, yeah, absolutely. So he has history with yep. Chief. Yep. Oh, so good. Yep, dude was on reach. Dude, he Buck. <laughs> he's just pops sitting here up. like I don't know what's going on. I need dude, to play that game. Dude, I'm so Bro, nerd okay. Now with what this. you need to do is sit down from Halo Wars one. Yep. And play through to Halo Infinite. I just need you two to tell me what order to play these games. In okay, so and it'll be start out with Halo, Halo Wars. I'll have them. I'll have them. I promise. Prom- this is my promise to both of you because I've been saying I'm gonna play these games yeah. for years now. I will have these games played by the end of the year, by November when we oh, go. By November, go to my, perfect. Because no, then Minnesota. we can talk about it. I still have all the Halos downloaded on my Xbox because I've been waiting for you to pick well, it up. And he can Let's guide you through it. it. It's true, he yeah. Can guide you through it. Hey, when we go, when we go up there, we should do a like a special episode oh uh, we'll do like a, sw- a twitch stream or something something no i'm saying like not even of that i'm saying like a, a pocket like a oh special, yeah, yeah oh if we're staying in the same place spe- yeah that's you what I'm know saying. Gonna, I, yeah we should have a this will go on for hours exclusive uncut uh podcast episode oh, it'll be 12 great. hours long no just oh, it'll be great <laughs> dude but, i could yeah. too the all night yeah. i'd do it <laughs> the all night oh the all night special oh the all night special oh so good yeah. but we're gonna need our energy for the actual kind that's though. true but yeah, yeah. But uh, no, yeah, that would be that fuck would be them dope. guests. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, yeah, that'd be sick. I told um, I told Ming Chen I was like, man, I would love to like show up and like there's just like an underrepresentation of minorities at comic book yeah. conventions. It's like I would love to just show up and be like the Asian at conventions. <laughs> and he was like, hi, right. dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's that's how ironic is that too. That there's like very minimal Asian representation at like anime cons. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um. No. Yeah. That I just find that 
laughable but we are in the midwest yeah so but that also like literally as i'm in there and i'm like looking around every time i see a black person i'm like hey bro come over to my table come <laughs> on you know yeah i know you see me and you see you see me see you okay just come over here like we're gonna that, talk it's like that key and peel skit where um he's obama giving everyone the handshake yeah yeah no literally <laughs> it, 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 it's like that it's really like that like you'll you'll see somebody i'll see somebody just anywhere and we just kind of peep each other like, hey what's up bro how you doing like we'll give each other the nod like i see you we both <laughs> we both black we in like, it yeah we out here um it, yeah but it's and i don't think see and that's one of the funny things about being black in the midwest that i don't think places like atlanta have because they don't need it because sure. there's so sure, many sure. black people but there is a sense of like, hey, even if we don't like each other, like there's a certain line where it's like, all right. So like if, we're, okay, so here's a scenario I usually give people. It's like, all right, even if we don't like each other, if we're in a bar and the white folks start fighting the black people, I'm not concerned with like who I don't like, who I don't like. My team is already picked for me. Like that's, <laughs> I don't really have a choice in the matter. Now, like, and I was having this conversation with one of my buddies from my unit, and um, he he and I are very similar. He's just on the white side of like nationalism and 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 uh, heritage and pride and stuff, which borderlines racist and like all this other stuff yeah. but i understand where he's coming from sure. and actually the way he does it is more of like the historical version of it where like spartans and athenians would have this rivalry and they're like proud of their heritage yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that is just you know the the times but um but he and i can have these conversations and have opposing views but we know we're still friends because it's like oh this is where you're from you're repping yep. your your people this is where i'm from i'm repping my people of course we think we're the best but at the end of the day all that aside like you're good people like yeah. this is what it is. nobody's perfect but like you know me and you we have commonality yeah and i think that's really what the issue with like being so um just hypersensitive about things today is like you don't have to necessarily change everything you can just accept that that's how people are yeah and continue to be productive with them um because that is that is actually celebrating diversity for the good and the bad because there's this thing of like oh no we're being tolerant no you're not you're wanting t everything to be how you like it if yeah. you were act tolerance true tolerance mm -hmm. is self-defeating mm -hmm. because it would have to tolerate a dictator to come in and make things intolerant yeah. again so true tolerance is self-defeating and so nothing is actually and that's why they're like oh no racist kill them uh these types of people kill like okay that's not really tolerant then is it it's you just want things the way that you want them which if that's the case you really have no moral high ground yeah like then it's just subjective going back to something you said earlier like i think i i grew up thinking that like my my little town of like 2800 people mm -hmm. was very racist yeah and i don't think it is racist i think it's 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 ignorant yeah Cause like I'll have, you know, my, my grandfather, I grew up with my grandparents. Mm -hmm. So like my grandfather passed away 2011. He was like in his early sixties. So he fought in the Vietnam war. Mm -hmm. Right. So people his age, like I had yeah. a handful of people his age that are like, Hey, like, <laughs> you know, I fought in the Vietnam war and I know you're from Laos, but like yeah. you're one of the good ones. And I'm like, yeah. Jim, yeah, I, I, I I don't even know my Laotian father, right. for one, and uh, I I grew up in the same shitty white town you did. Yeah, all right? you've so known like, me my whole yeah, life. Yeah, dick. You're like you're one <laughs> of the good ones. It's like <laughs> you, I'm not even one of the ones. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, well, I would hope so, considering you freaking raised me. Yeah, like, exactly. I, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, that that that's definitely a um, that's something I've heard as well. I had a, a, a my high school girlfriend, um, her dad worked at the sheriff's office and he we have very similar stories yeah he he, <laughs> he was uh he he was just like and okay so i was getting ready to take her to homecoming and she was getting ready i was in the living room and he was giving me that talk whatever the the normal talk would have been fine of like oh, i want her home by eight and whatever 
this man gone. You no, know, I, I know how black men treat black women. It's like they're like trophies and da 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 da. And I used to work at the sheriff's department, so I, I know how you guys are. But you know, I know you're mixed though, so you're you're not as bad. Literally said that. I'm looking at him. I'm like, bro, I hope you know your daughter's coming home with me tonight. Like, I, <laughs> I, like just in my head, I'm like, I still win. I, but uh, no, yeah. So that was the last white girl I dated. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so that that's definitely something I've heard before. And those types of encounters and circumstances are why I'm, what makes it easy to be unapologetic in my mission? Cause it's yeah. like, y'all have your views, which is fine. Like, but here's the thing. I'm the type of person. I accept you have your views. If you would like to change them, of course I would. Yeah. I would love oh, that. Yeah. But you have your views. I'm not going to sit here and even tell you you're wrong. I'll tell you, I disagree. And I think you're stupid, but I'm not going to tell you you're wrong per se. Right. Cause who am I? I have, an equal and opposite view that is very Afrocentric. You yes. have a Eurocentric view. I don't think those are inherently bad. It's just what you do with those views that will determine that. Um, and But people today, by and large, will say, no, that's wrong and you need to agree with me. And it's like, no, let's just, we can let people have their views, but depending on, again, what they do with those views is right, different. Right. But if, if you, you know, like, okay i'll even take it to the extreme like the kkk in and of itself if they just want to get together and ride around in their sheets <laughs> that's not hurting anybody it, in and of itself you know what i'm right. saying now obviously the history of it whatever but now once they started lynching people and all this stuff like then that like okay bro y'all gotta stop that right but you can't change somebody's heart by addressing their action mm -hmm. you have to address their heart and so what people do now is, oh, you're racist because of this and you need to stop. Like you're addressing, like I have some familiar, some familiarization with like psychology and stuff too. So, um, you have to actually address the core, uh, the core beliefs and, and, and all those things. Got this white baby staring you down right now. What's up? <laughs> How you doing? Dude, now that we know that you're going to be at Twin Cities Con as well, yeah. like, Yeah. This is, not gonna, no this is not going to be the last time that oh, we yeah, hear absolutely. Bossy on uh, Ice Cream Sunday. So. Oh, yeah. no, I can't I, wait for that XL episode of uh, Halo Talk. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. Bro, I I tell pe every time I go on a podcast, any type, I'm like, bro, call me back. I like uh, have me come back in, yeah. even if it's not to do with my company, anything like just to have guest speaker, whatever. Cause yeah, dude, it'll be so much fun. I li I like talking. I'm a nerd. I like, be you know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. And maybe I'll have something to plug, but <laughs> like. You know, it's uh, <clears throat> yeah, but um, there's been we, so many times that we'll have guests on and we'll be like, hey, let's talk about like this thing that you do or yeah. that like your business or your art or whatever. And that goes on for like 20 minutes. And then it's like, yeah. All right. So this one time in high school, I dated this girl. Right. That, like it, it goes off in so yep. many different directions. So, well, and that's what it is. Cause there's really no such thing as product. Like I'm not selling people comic books. I am selling people the value of of what it represents yeah. the value of representation diversity um authentic storytelling things of that there nature. you go that's the title of the podcast the value of representation yeah the value of representation Boom. absolutely um but yeah no so I, I i tell people all the time bring me back i'll talk about it and i actually will have some updates i'll come back on when i seal the deal oh, with lion forge and and all that stuff and because i want my stuff to be like midwest centric yeah you know so no, to to close it out, um, do you have any plans to um, get your comic out to, like, say, JC Din Hobby or Mayhem or anything like that? It's funny how many times people ask me this. So we got to do my introduction thing, though, yes. too, though, remember? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so um, we'll do that after this. They So both of those particularly are always named, and I get asked. I've physically gone into both. And they were just not interested. Oh. And I, so at Mayhem, they both acted interested. Mayhem, they were like, oh yeah, this is cool. I like the feel of the comic. This is nice. I just, you know, it's not something that, they, they gave it a whole like two minutes of thought. Yeah. And I was like, all right, whatever. I'm trying to put you on like, but I don't blame you because how often is it that this random guy walks in and he's very sure of what he's about to do and he's taking the actions to do it. And now he has this deal lined up and now he, I don't blame them for yep. it. But yep. at the same time. 
you gotta take a risk. Yeah, y'all are a local shop. You see that the, it's a good product. You just said so. Like you just don't want to put in the work to put another to put an indie author up or whatever. Yep. Um. So at Jay's, they I even gave them a a a, a copy of it to to give to the owner or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. Never got back to me. Emailed them a couple times. Whatever. I was like, dang, bro. And so y'all gonna pay me for that comic then? Like what? You know? Yeah. But. I'm not worried about it. It was 20 bucks. Yeah. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, no, I would still want to get into the shops, but at this point it's, uh, it's kind of something where it's like, all right, I'm gonna wait until I'm like mega big. And then I'm going to walk in there and be like, Hey, now do you want to take my comics? <laughs> well, too bad. Um, <laughs> nah, I'm not, I'm not petty like that. Uh, anymore i would but, be yeah I'm, i was gonna I'm say so petty. I, no that's why i said it right now because that's what i would like to do but um <laughs> but uh I, I i'm i am now the type of person or turning into the type of person that's just like i'll kill him with success like yeah i don't even care like hey you see now you should have got in on it earlier because you would have had like first edition copies and like all that that's, kind of stuff like you <laughs> that, missed out this Played sounds yourself. so petty but that's where i'm at right now and Played i'm like yourself. All my Facebook friends, I'm like, guys, mm-hmm. you're going to want to like like the page yeah. and you're going to want to share the content because you're going to look real stupid in like mm-hmm. five, 10 years when people yep. are like, you're going to go back and be like, I knew that kid yep. back in 2020. Yep. And then everyone else is going to be like, sure you did. Right. More specifically, six years later when we can finally release that episode. <laughs> of what? Oh, oh there's a huge so story. I... I left this this particular job that we can't talk about, um, and I signed an NDA, <laughs> ah. and we were gonna talk we were gonna talk about like just how much of a shit show it was, and we had announced that we had an episode about this place, and then they hit you up and, and was like, nope, me, you signed an they NDA hit me with a cease and mm-hmm. desist, a seven year long NDA." Sheesh. So six years from now so so in order to to get around that though we released an episode that was one long continuous bleep for like like an hour and 14 minutes and to this day i listened to the whole thing (laughs) on that bleep and then uh at the very end it cuts out and goes well that about does it <laughs> and that, and to anyone who like personally knows us, like that's very on brand for our kind of humor yeah. too. So like it fits so perfectly. Oh, that's funny. Trolling is my favorite.